Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. And here is the question for this segment. Do you think the House of Representatives should lock Lois Lerner up? As you're aware, uh, they are an investigation is being launched or is going to be launched, should be launched into Lois Lerner. She has been found in contempt. The House voted yesterday and it was bipartisan. There were, um, well, let, let's let's talk first of all about the investigation of the IRS. 26 House Democrats voted yesterday to appoint a special counsel to investigate the IRS for targeting conservative groups. Remember, we've seen this. Conservative groups were targeted. Tea Party groups were targeted. Not a progressive group was targeted. Not one. They all got off the hook. Uh, some of them got, got special treatment. You know, Barack Obama's half-brother, Barack Hussein Obama, to start the Barack Hussein Obama Foundation. Now it's just the Barack Obama Foundation. He got approval in 30 days. You've got Tea Party groups that have been waiting four years for that kind of approval. So um, Democrats, 26 of them, voted, yeah, I think we need to investigate the IRS. You know, the House Republicans discovered that 10% of the donors to the Tea Party were audited. So it wasn't just the Tea Party groups that were audited one out of every 10 individuals who gave money to a tea party group got audited by the IRS. So clearly it was a witch hunt to try to suppress their uh, vote. Now um, you've got Democrats supporting this special prosecutor for this targeting by the IRS from California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Massachusetts, and uh, New York. So this is not just reserved for Democrats from moderate uh, states. So even 13% of House Democrats think it needs some investigation. Now, as you're aware, the House voted, and I think there were, I don't know if there were any Democrats who voted for the contempt citation for, um, for Lois Lerner. I thought maybe there were six. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But anyway, I think six Democrats voted to hold Lois Lerner in contempt. Now, the, 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 uh, the, the reality is that the House of Representatives can lock her up if they want. They have the legal power, the legal capacity to lock Lois Lerner up. She was the one that was spearheading this uh, blockading of Tea Party groups. She affected the 2012 election. She single-handedly, by suppressing the ability of the Tea Party to raise money to get their voice out, she may have affected the 2012 election. It's not too big of a stretch to say that she is she did more than anyone uh, to make sure that Barack Obama was reelected. She rigged, basically, the outcome of the 2012 election by suppressing the voices of dissent. This is not an incidental thing that this woman did, and she directed it. She was behind it. The emails make it very clear she was behind this. She was targeting these groups, reviewing every application, trying to make as much trouble for them as she possibly could. And then she had the audacity to appear before Congress, and the first thing she said is, I'm innocent. Then she took the fifth. Well, you can't do that. I mean, when she said, I'm innocent, she waived her right to claim the Fifth Amendment. You can't do it. Once you start giving testimony, you can't suddenly quit and say, I claim the Fifth Amendment. She waived it when she made a statement on her own behalf. Uh, and everybody understands that's legally she waived her right when she gave testimony on her own uh, behalf. She can't hide behind the fifth. And obviously you, you can't have a legal system where somebody, where a criminal can say, yeah, I'm going to give testimony. He gets up, he gets in the box, and he says, I'm innocent. I didn't rob anybody. I didn't steal anybody. I didn't shoot anybody. And then the prosecutor gets up and he says, oh, I'm going to take the fifth, not going to say anything else. You can't do that. You know, once you give testimony, then you're open to cross-examination. She would not do it. She would not allow herself to be, um, uh, to, to be questioned, and she would not offer information, truthful information, to the House. And so they voted yesterday to officially hold her in uh, contempt. Now, what was interesting to me, I went back to 2007, 2007, found a New York Times piece on this issue of contempt. And let me just mention this before, just the legal business about, yeah, six Democrats. Here's the story. Six Democrats joined House Republicans 
and holding Lois Lerner in contempt. You know what is true about all six of these guys? All six of these Democrats that voted to hold her in contempt are from swing districts, and they have a tough re-election campaign coming up in 2014. So they're voting to try to boost their re-election chances. But here is uh, the way the contempt procedure uh, works. What the House has done is what's called inherent contempt. This is when only one House of Congress does it. Following a contempt citation, the person cited is arrested by the sergeant at arms for the House or Senate, brought to the floor of the chamber, held to answer charges by the presiding officer, and then subjected to punishment as the chamber may dictate, usually imprisonment for punishment reasons, imprisonment for coercive effect, or release from the contempt citation. In other words, we're going to lock you up until you agree to come and answer our questions. Uh, Congress retains its inherent contempt authority and may exercise it at any time. That means right now. So the House can do this if they want to do it. This inherent contempt process was last used by the Senate in 1934. So what? that's been 80 years since it was used. But it was used in a Senate investigation of airlines and the U.S. Postmaster. I'm saying this is way more serious than what some airline was doing and what they were doing with postage stamps. There might have been some kind of corruption involved there, but they used the inherent contempt uh, power back then. This is in the Senate. After a one-week trial on the Senate floor, William P. McCracken, Jr., a lawyer and former assistant secretary of commerce for aeronautics who had allowed clients to rip up subpoenaed documents, was found guilty and sentenced to 10 days imprisonment, 10 days in the Huskow. And these people cannot be pardoned. They're not eligible for a presidential pardon. They actually got to go behind bars and uh, serve their time. Now, if you're found in criminal contempt of Congress, that would have to be both houses, criminal contempt of Congress. That's against the law, and the penalty is not less than one month in jail, nor more than 12 months in jail, and a fine of not less than 100 bucks or more than 1000 bucks. Number to call if you want to weigh in on whether you think uh, Lois Lerner ought to go behind bars for a time. I went back and found it's 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Went back and found the New York Times piece from 2007. Now, at that time, it was members of the Bush administration that were under the hot seat. They had two of them, Joshua Bolton, the White House chief of staff. This is Bush now. Harriet Myers, a former White House counsel, they were both subpoenaed. They ignored the subpoenas. They didn't show up. They were held in contempt. This is Bush now. So listen to the New York Times 2007 when we're talking about uh, Bush. Um, from, the Republicans, from, the Republicans, from the Republic's earliest days, Congress has had the right to hold recalcitrant witnesses in contempt and even imprison them all by itself. New York Times, you're in inherent contempt. You can go to prison, and they're defending it. They're supporting it. They're saying it's appropriate in this case. 1795, shortly after the Constitution was ratified, the House ordered its sergeant-at-arms to arrest and detain two men accused of trying to bribe members of Congress. The House held a trial, convicted one of them. 1821, Supreme Court upheld Congress's right to hold people in contempt and imprison them. In a 1927 case arising from the Teapot Dome scandal, the court upheld the Senate's arrest of the brother of a former attorney general carried out in Ohio by the deputy sergeant at arms for ignoring a subpoena to testify. Congressional Research Service issued a report in July of 2007 that confirmed Congress's inherent contempt powers. The individual is brought before the House or Senate by the sergeant at arms, tried at the bar of the body, and can be imprisoned in the Capitol jail. Congress can do this. New York Times goes on, the report concluded to compel them to testify or punish them for their refusal to do so. This country has seen far too much, talking about the Bush administration, far too much of this sort of dismissal of Congress's authority. There is a simple way to avoid a constitutional showdown. If Congress holds witnesses in contempt, the Justice Department should enforce the subpoenas. Mr. McCasey, who was the DOJ head at the time, would need to focus not on the White House interests, but rather on his duty to ensure that the laws are faithfully executed. All right, do you think Lois Lerner ought to be jailed for contempt? 888-589-8840. Let's start with Miller in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Miller, what do you think? Hey, I think absolutely they should be, and I think that's what's the whole problem in our country 
is that we have laws and guidelines and regulations, and and then when you get somebody that's really flagrantly, do, you know, violate, they just say nothing. And you have to understand that silence by the people of the Congress connotes agreement or approval of what those people did. Yeah. And if you don't approve it and you think it's wrong and you go to the point of actually uh, finding the woman in contempt, I mean, after all, why should she be get, getting a free ride? I mean, you know, the women's rights and all that stuff, they want to be up there and play hardball with the guys and let them, let them hang. Mm-hmm. And that, that's just absolutely what should happen. Well, you know, and, and some of the Republicans talking about this is, look, if we don't do something here, then then we're making a mockery of the Congress. We're making a mockery of the power that's been invested in us by the Constitution. If we let this go with no challenge, no reaction, then everybody can do this. Why should anybody cooperate with Congress again? All right, Miller, appreciate the call. Let's go to Jack, North Carolina. Jack, welcome to Focal Point. Got about a minute left in the segment. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. That's hey. cool. Listen, I just want to tell you, first time, uh, first time caller, long time listener. I appreciate what you do, man. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just wanted to uh, just just a little bit of FYI on uh, Mike McIntyre. You had mentioned that in 2014 they had some, uh, you know, uh, uh, precarious elections coming up. Uh, Mike, uh, I don't believe is planning on running again. I'm in North Carolina. I don't believe he's planning on running again. But I can tell you this. Uh, he is, he's never been a Nancy Pelosi yes man, never. If you look at his record, and I, I don't agree with everything he's done, but uh, he, uh, he, <laughs> he's been accused by the local libs of being uh, a Democrat in name only. So uh, uh, kudos to Mike McIntyre, and I want to appreciate what he's done, but I absolutely agree. I mean, he's strong on all the social issues. He's a fiscal conservative. Uh, and, um, you know, I appreciate what he's done, how he's represented. Now, got, got 10 seconds. Do you have an opinion about Lois Lerner? Do you think she ought to be locked up for a time on contempt? For a long time. For a long time. All right. Okay, out of time, Jack. Appreciate the call. Thank you for that. So I got some folks thinking that Congress ought to exercise its constitutionally po- constitutional powers upheld by the Supreme Court. Throw Lois Lerner behind bars. Focal point AFR Talk. Back in two.